Hi there, my name is Madeline and welcome to my loose watercolor sunlight tutorial where we will be painting a few trees with a really pretty burst of sunlight shining through them. Let's quickly go over supplies. I will be using 100% cotton cold press watercolor paper. The size is 3.5 by 5.5. I have masking tape and I'm going to be using two brushes. I have a round zero and a round six and I'll talk a little bit more about the brushes after going over the rest of the supplies. Um, but I want to go over the colors that I'm going to be using today so I just want to swatch them out for you. So the first color that we are going to be using today is a raw sienna which is kind of like a darker yellow ochre. The second color that I'm going to be using is a warm olive green. And the third color that I'm going to be using is a granulating brown. And by granulating, I mean that when you paint onto cold pressed or textured watercolor paper, you kind of see the brown paint pulling a little bit darker in some areas. You might see little spots of brown. And that's probably the most important quality of the paints that you use. It's not necessarily the shade that I use, but that you use a granulating brown paint. I'm going to talk a little bit about the brushes. And the first brush that I'm going to be using is a round synthetic brush. The size of the brush that you use will depend on how big your paper is, but we want our brush to be able to make straight clean lines and we want it to have a very precise point. The second brush will be specifically for painting the foreground and making some paint splatters. So I'm using a red sable hair brush, but basically we want a brush where we can kind of get a little bit rough with it and smash it against the paper. And the reason is I want to be able to make these types of kind of rough brush strokes or brush motions. And this allows me to sort of mix colors together and sort of get a really nice texture. These rough brush strokes give us little random pockets of white space and I just really love how loose it looks. And sable hair brushes are also really thirsty, so they're really good for paint splatters. So I like to be able to get some paint splatters just by tapping my finger against the brush like this. And so these are the two brushes that we are going to be using for this painting. So I'm going to start off by taping my paper down with some masking tape. I'm going to start off by painting the tree on the right. I am going to grab some of my brown paint and I'm going to start outlining the first tree. So I'm going to start right about here and I'm going to paint a line down and this is going to be the right side of this tree and then we will go back up right about here. And so we're gonna have a halo of light right at the center of our piece here. So I'm not gonna fill in that top part of our tree just yet. So this painting in particular is um, pretty fun to me because of the way that watercolor is able to show light. Um, and the way that watercolor shows light is by really using the most unique part of the painting medium, which is its transparency. And the transparency of watercolor allows for us to see this really bright spot in our painting. And that's what I, that's personally my favorite part of watercolor. And I, I just really like how it looks um, in this reference photo. And so I hope you guys enjoy painting light as much as I do. <laughs> But so this area right here is where the light's going to be. So um, what I'm going to do now is I washed my brush off. 
so my brush has no paint on it and I'm just taking that clean brush and I am pulling that color down making essentially this part of the tree a bit transparent right there and so I want the light to be like a semicircle right here on that upper part of the tree so right now I'm just using a clean brush with just water and I'm going to lift that color right there and I'm going to darken it a little bit up here but I want it to look like that and so now I am going to grab a little bit of a paper towel and I'm just going to pick up a little bit more color. And again, this is just a clean brush. I'm just going to lift the color so that we have kind of like a semicircle. And so we want like that line right there, that very left side of the tree. But we want um, it to be pretty transparent right here. And then I darkened the bottom just a little bit. So that is our first tree and we're gonna paint the two trees on the left side now. So I'm going to paint the very left tree first. And so these trees are a little bit higher up in the foreground, so I'm just going to pull this tree down a tiny bit. And so the bottom of these left two trees is just a little bit higher on the paper than that tree on the right. And so when I'm painting this tree right here, you don't have to paint um, like a solid block of brown. You can actually make some parts of it like a little bit lighter and some parts a little bit darker because um, trees you know aren't one solid brown color they're sort of like variations of color and that kind of shows its texture and I think when you use a granulating brown paint um, it highlights that texture even more and so I don't really think what shade of brown quite matters as much as the fact that your paint um, can granulate and can kind of show these different textures. So now I'm going to work on the right tree and they're connected at the bottom right here so that they make a little V. So I'm going to leave that part right there um, open so that we can make it really transparent. So I'm going to fill in the bottom right here and I'm going to go upwards. So I'm going to go up till right about here. And then I'm going to clean my brush off and using a clean brush I'm just going to touch that and sort of bring that color down and giving that transparent um, making that part look transparent
And so again, I'm going to grab a little bit of paper towel and I'm just going to lift a little bit more color. Um, and I sort of want um, that halo of light to sort of look like a soft circle. So oops, I think I might have gone a little bit too dark, but I'm going to add a little bit more color back. And then I'm going to wash my brush so that it's clean again. And I'm going to just make a brush stroke downwards like this to smooth that out. And again, we want to preserve that like line right there, but we do want to lift that color. And I'll just dab it one last time. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my sable hair brush and we are going to paint the foreground. And so I'm just grabbing a little bit of water and I'm not doing like a full wet on wet wash in the front foreground right here. I'm just sort of adding water a little bit here and a little bit there so that when we start um, putting our paints there, um, they'll start to bleed together. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the Va Sienna. I'm going I'm to take my brush and I'm going to make these kind of rough brush strokes and I'm going to grab a little bit of my green and um, sort of melt these colors together like that and I like using my brush and creating um, depth like this or dimension, not dimension, um, texture because it there's like a little bit of white space um, but the colors kind of mixed together and I just really like how loose it looks and feels and so I'm just gonna drop a little bit of brown um, here and there and um, I'm gonna grab a little bit more yellow um, for right here on the side Now I'm just going to do a few paint splatters to kind of um, darken some of the areas a little bit more randomly. Um, I'm going to do some brown paint splatters. And then um, now while the foreground dries, um, Let's work on the blurry background. So you want to make sure that your trees are fully dry before painting this part. If your trees are even um, slightly damp, your colors are going to bleed. So right now I'm just um, putting a little bit of water right here where I'm going to paint the blurry background. If you are not completely sure if your trees have dried, I would just play it safe and um, use a hot air tool and dry them or just wait a little bit longer. Um, I can see from the, I can see and I can tell that my paints are dry, so um, I feel comfortable um, moving on with this part. Um, but basically, we're just going to drop some really light color to um, paint that really blurry background. So these colors are going to be um, even lighter than our foreground because in the reference photo, um, it's just kind of like a blur and so we want all of it to be really soft and so that's why I draw um, I wetted that middle section of the paper um, beforehand and I'm just gonna wet it a little bit more and drop in some green right here and so like I said earlier the green here is going to be lighter than the green on our foreground because this is actually like further away
So I'm actually going to switch back to my um, synthetic ground and I'm going to drop some color, a little bit more color right here. So we actually want that center, that circle right there, to be um, our brightest point. So I'm actually going to lift this color that I put there because I don't want the brown to go that high. But we do want um, these um, background colors to be um, really blended and very soft. So. Um, after you drop in um, the lighter color, you can take just the clean brush and um, sort of soften those edges right there. So if you get a hard line um, anywhere on your piece, just like as a general rule of thumb, if you get a hard line with watercolor, um, if you just take your brush with clean water um, and just sort of rub the hard line, it it'll, um, it sort of as the brush sort of acts like an eraser and it sort of erases that hard edge. So I'm just taking a clean brush and I'm just softening all of these edges. And the last thing we're going to do is paint some shadows. So I'm going to grab my brown, I'm going to mix it with my green, and um, I'm going to paint the shadow for this tree this way, because that's how it was in the reference photo. And for the other tree it was going that way. I'm actually going to take um, a paper towel and I'm going to dab up some of that color right there. Um, let's actually not overwork that middle area in the foreground because actually that's where the light shines through and I want that part to stay bright. So we do not want to overwork that area. So let's just leave that area be. So now I'm done and I'm going to use a hot air tool and I'm going to completely dry um, this layer. Now I'm going to grab my sable hair brush and I'm just going to do some quick splatters on the foreground just to give it um, just a tiny bit more texture.
and then I'm just gonna dry off these splatters really quickly and now that it's done we can peel our masking tape and there we have our watercolor sunlight painting I really love this piece and I hope you enjoyed painting with me